everybody and welcome to this beautiful evening um, for some yoga in the actual garden tonight. Uh, Pebbles might join in a little bit as well. So this evening we're going to do a heart opening practice. A um, little bit of back bending, a little bit of twisting and that's going to start lying on our backs. No props required for this practice. So come to any comfy position on your back. <laughs> with your feet about yoga mat width apart so if they're not if you haven't got a yoga mat like me it's just nice to lie on the grass if you haven't got yoga mat have them just a bit wider than your hips and let your knees rest against each other let your arms just soften and relax find some space in your back place one hand on your tummy one hand on your chest And begin to focus on your breath. Focus on the sensation of the weight of your body on the floor. What can you feel underneath you? How does it feel to be lying still? How does it feel to be breathing? notice that you are breathing and where your breath is going notice the journey of your breath now let's start to lengthen and deepen our breath taking a nice deep breath into your belly Breathing out through your mouth and letting go into the ground beneath you. And again, deep breath into your belly and let go out through your mouth, side your head. One more like that. Deep breath in, create expansion. Feel your back press against the floor. And exhale through your mouth. Soften, let go. Take your arms out to the side and bring your feet, oh, keep your feet where they are, sorry, and open up your knees. And then let's let our knees drop over to the right. Just twisting over to the right. Perhaps you turn your head to look to your left, perhaps not. And think about activating the left hamstring here. So to do so we're going to press the inside of the left foot into the floor and actively try to drag the heel towards the bottom. It's not going to move because you're pressing it down into the floor as well but you've got that engagement and that helps deepen the twist. Still breathing into your belly and then breathe in and bring your knees up to the centre. If you need to you can pick your hips up and have a shimmy. And let's let our knees drop over to the left. And we'll do the same with the right foot. So press the inside of the right foot into the floor and actively see if you can drag the heel towards the glute. Feeling the hamstrings switching on. And that actively deepens the twist. Your shoulders are opening out to the floor. So breathing into your belly. And you're enjoying this sense of space with a little bit of work going on in your legs. And then take a deep breath in, come back to centre, and this time bring your feet together. Take your arms overhead, and we're going to roll all the way over onto our right hand side. So rolling all the way onto your right hand side, reaching your arms out above you. Take your knees back just as, as much as is comfortable for you, with your knees bent at 90 degrees. Reach your arms up out behind you, and see if you can press your hips forward, particularly this top hip tendency is to roll back, to press the top hip forward, a little bit of a back bend, a little bit like Ustras in a camel pose. You can lift your left foot off your right foot a little bit if you want, and then relax, roll back onto your back. Take a double knee hug, have a little roll, a rock, your head can be lifted or not, wiggle your toes, and let's do the same on the other side. So feet come down to the floor arms overhead, roll over to the left, 
reach your arms up above you, take your feet back, press your hips forward, particularly your top hip for the right hip, feeling a little back bend and a stretch in the opening across the front of the hips and chest. Reaching into your fingers, turning your little fingers towards each other still, breathing. And then rolling onto your back, taking a knee hug. Maybe circling the ankles. And placing your feet flat to the floor. Walking your heels back towards your bum and your knees point straight up to the ceiling. Feet are about hip width apart here. Arms are going to come up into cactus arms. So elbows next to your shoulders, elbows bent at 90 degrees. Press into your shoulders and your upper arms and take an inhale and start to peel your hips off the floor, lifting your hips, squeezing your inner thighs towards each other. And when you get to your maximum lift, we'll just have a little rock from side to side with the hips, just stretching out the hips, the spine, opening up the front of the body a little bit, easing ourselves into this space rather than shocking our body. And come to stillness. If you want, you can stay here, just in a relaxed bridge with your elbows out by your side. If you want to go deeper for one or two more breaths, interlace your hands underneath your hips, walk your shoulder blades together, press your heels down into the floor, and actively try to drag your heels towards your bottom, activating those hamstrings again. Hopefully you'll feel that breathing into your chest, feeling space around the collarbones, opening your heart and then relaxing your arms out wide and slowly peeling your spine down to the floor when you get there bring your feet together and let your knees drop apart i'm going to turn to face you this way now so we can see what's going on so feet together knees apart and we're going to come up onto our elbows. So use your elbows to support you now to lift up. And rather than collapsing into your shoulders here, think about lifting your chest forwards and up at the same time as dragging your feet towards you, engaging through the mulabanda, opening the chest. So of course you could do this with props, but we're doing a prop free class tonight. So use your elbows, lift out of your shoulders though. We don't want to damage our shoulders. Take a few breaths here, expanding the chest and opening the hips. Spread the toes and pull the feet, heels back towards you. And then make your way all the way up to seated. Lovely. Sitting in Baddha Konasana, cobbler pose. Take a little bit of twisting action here. So just give your neck a little bit of a roll, releasing any tension in your neck. And if this feels too strong, you can take your feet a little bit further forwards or you can sit up on a cushion or a block if you have one. Let's bring the right hand over to the left knee and the left hand out behind us. Take a deep breath in, lengthen the spine and as you exhale we're going to windmill our arms over to the right, left hand to right knee, right hand behind. Take a deep breath in, exhale, arms come up and over to the left, breathing in. Exhale, up and over, twisting to the right. <laughs> Breathe in. Exhale, up and over. We'll do one more each side. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, up and over. Return back to centre. You're going to extend the right leg out straight and bend the right knee, bringing the right foot kind of in line, sorry, right leg out straight, bending the left knee, bring the left foot kind of in line with the right knee, with about a fist's width of space between the two. If you're feeling a little bit more flexible and comfortable in the low back, you can bring your heel closer to your bottom, but if it's too much, take it forward. And we're gonna take this into an easy, basic Ardha Matsi Andrasana twist. So press the right thigh down into the floor, pull the right toes back towards the shin. Hold on to the right knee, take your left arm out behind you, fingertips to the floor, not leaning backwards into the hand, 
not lifting the left shoulder, so keeping the spine long, relaxing the shoulders away from the ears, perhaps turning your head to look over your left shoulder. And just drop your awareness to your pelvis for a moment. Now, I feel automatically here that I'm chilled out in this posture, I'm kind of hanging out here, my right leg is projecting forwards as I twist, which means that I'm, my twist is happening from the hip. That's okay. If you have lower back and hip problems, that's okay. But if you want to work with the twist, taking the twist into the spine, the mid spine, then let's see if we can pull the right leg back into the socket. Now I find the way to activate this right leg is to just hover it off the floor, just a couple of millimeters. Now that has to in order to make my leg feel lighter, I have to pull it back in towards me. So I lift it up and I pull my right glute back. And I might come out of my twist a little bit. That's okay. That means the twist is happening where it's supposed to. Lovely. If you can take your hands away and do it as well, that means you're working your core muscles and you're breathing. And then relax. Lower your foot if it's lifted. Excellent. Come back to centre. Let your left knee drop down to the side. We're going to lean to the left and bend the right knee, taking the right foot out behind us. And again, we can always modify. If that's too strong on your right knee, have your right foot to the floor with your right knee bent in front of you. But for me, that feels quite comfortable and I can take my right leg quite far back. And see if you can creep your left shin so that your left knee is at a 90 degree angle, flexing your left foot. And we're in a seated variation of a pigeon pose here. Turn your torso to the left shin and ground down through your right buttock. Flex your left foot. Take a deep breath in, lengthen your spine. And as you exhale, see if you can fold over your left shin. Any amount, it doesn't have to be far. But take your arms a little bit wider than your shoulders and come up onto your fingertips. We're going to do some upper back cat cows here in our twisted seated pigeon. So as you inhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together. You can roll onto the front edge of your left sit bone. Lift your chest, lift your heart. As you exhale, roll backwards, maybe connecting the right sit bone to the floor, rounding your upper back chin to chest. Inhale, lifting. Squeezing the shoulder blades, exhale to round, chin to chest. We'll do one more like that, inhale to lift, exhale to round. Walk your hands back in and now we're going to connect the left foot to the right thigh. Bring your right hand onto your left knee and your left hand out behind you. Let's get some warmth into the shoulders now. So we're twisting in this variation of Bharadvajasana pose. Grounding down through both sit bones. I'm on a bit of a hill, so I do feel like I'm lolling to my left anyway. Um, so I've got to try and really work hard to ground my right sit down, bone down, which means my right left knee is lifting a little bit, and that's okay, that's fine. So keeping the right hand where it is. Take an inhale, breathe into your upper back. And as you exhale, connect your hand. Sorry, inhale, come over, connect your hand to your opposite knee. Exhale, take your hand out behind you. You can follow your thumb with your eyes. Inhale, bring that breathe into your upper back. Left hand to right knee, round the upper back. Exhale, through the mouth if you like. Bring the left hand out behind you. Just One more, inhale. Round the back, breathing into the upper back, compressing, exhale, opening up into your twist, and we're going to stay in our twist. Try not to pull on this left knee, I was conscious that I was doing that a little bit there, so relax the grip on your left knee. You might keep your left fingers out behind you, if your shoulder is feeling nice and warm and flexible, depending on the time of day and what you've done, some of you might be able to reach your fingers around and hook your fingers around your right inner thigh, relaxing shoulders away from ears, lifting the chest and grounding down through the sit bone. And then turning your head to look over your right shoulder. 
Nice twisty spine. Spiraling that wonderful sunshine energy up through our Shashumna Nadi central energy channel. And then bring your head back to the center. Release your arms. And we're going to roll over to all fours. So coming over to all fours. Just have a little bit of play with movement here on all fours. Stretching out, moving, freestyle movements through your body, through your hips, through your spine, your neck, your elbows, your shoulders, your face. And then we're going to make our way into our first down dog of the class. So maybe hands a little bit tiny, a tiny bit further forwards of your shoulders. Press your hands down into the floor. It feels wonderful doing this on grass because it's like you're trying to grab hold of hands full of grass. Tuck your toes under and lift your hips up and back into the air behind you. It doesn't have to be a steep down dog. Knees can be really bent. Head is relaxed. You can walk your feet out a little bit if you want to. Lifting your hips up towards the sky. And then slowly walking your feet forwards to your hands and bringing your hands to your feet and connecting into a forward fold somewhere on your mat, letting your head nod to release any tension in the neck. Spread your toes if you found them gripping and let go. And we're going to take a nice deep bend with the right knee and start to straighten the left leg. Right fingertips can be on the floor. Some of you might have the flexibility to keep your right hand on the floor with a nice long spine. Some of you might not, might have to even bring your right hand onto your right thigh or shin and that's fine. Everyone has their own practice and everyone has their own flexibility. The days are different. So listen to what your body wants right now. Then the left hand, so the left leg is straight, the left leg hand comes around behind and rests on the low back. Belly is pulling up towards the spine and we're lengthening the spine. Just have a feel around on your lower back to make sure your the sacrum, the flat part of your lower back feels level. You're not dipping in the left hip. Both hips are even and level. Now keep that levelness as we start to lift the left elbow up towards the sky. Some of you might lift the left arm up as well, stretching as if someone was going to come in and give you a great big hug. Drawing your belly in, but still breathing. On your next inhale, lift all the way up, keeping your arms in that hug position, embrace position. Bring your left hand onto your lower back, reach your right hand up to the sky. Spread your fingers out on your lower back, press your hips forwards and down, and reach your right hand up. Your standing back bend, see how you feel in your standing back bend. Lifting the kneecaps, lifting through the pelvic floor. And then on an exhale, folding forwards. Dropping both arms, dropping your neck. And we'll vinyasa back to seated. So bend your knees, plant your hands, step back to a plank. Lower your body down. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale to down dog. Take a resting breath in your down dog. And then we're going to step the right knee to the right wrist, cross the left shin over the right, left knee to left wrist, and sit back. So you're in a cross leg position. Extend your legs out in front of you, and this time we're going to bend the right knee, repeating the sequence on the right hand side. So the left foot flexes, the left thigh presses down into the earth. We lift from the tailbone upwards, as if there were a string of energy pulling us upwards. Wrapping the left arm or hand, <coughs> excuse me, around the right knee, and the right hand comes out behind you. Taking a gentle Adha Matsyandrasana. Now, again, just take your awareness and your attention to your hips. Are you twisting from the hips and getting really deep into this twist and thinking, oh yeah, I can go all the way around. No, 
<laughs> so maybe not. So let's take the twist from the spine. So lifting up through the spine, pulling the left hip, left leg back into its socket, maybe lifting the left ankle or heel off the floor. It's harder, it is harder. So you can go hands free. We're not going to be as deep in the twist and that's okay. And then release, turn back to center. Let your right knee drop down towards the floor. Lean onto your right buttock. Bend your left knee and bring your left foot out beside you. Now, again, if this is too much on this left knee, by all means, put the left foot on the floor with the knee up to the sky. And just see what flexibility, what range of motion you've got. Maybe you can walk your left knee back a little bit. Maybe you can bring in a 90 degree bend on your right knee, but please do flex your right foot. Turning your torso, hello pebbles, turning your torso to root to your right shin. Take a deep inhale, lengthen through the spine. And then exhale to fold over your right shin. Lifting belly away from thigh. And it's a, it's a balance of pushing and pulling throughout the whole of your body to try and get length and not to take all the weight forward and dump all the weight forward in this right leg. So lengthening from the left sit bone. And then walk your hands in just a little bit. We'll do a few upper back cat cows. Inhaling, squeezing the shoulder blades, lifting the chin if it feels okay. Exhaling, rolling, rounding the back. Inhaling. And exhaling. One more. Deep four ujjayi breath if it's appropriate. Or even breathing out through the mouth. It's warm at the moment, so breathing out through the mouth will help. Come back to centre. Walk your hands in. Come more through a more upright spine. And connect your right foot to your left thigh. And we'll come for our Bharadvajasana variation. So left hand to the right knee, right hand out behind you. Keeping your left hand where it is, inhale, reach your right arm up and over like a rainbow towards your left knee, rounding your back. Exhale, open your chest, take your right arm out behind you. Inhale, up and over, rainbow. Exhale up and over behind you one more time inhale into your upper back sprinkle fairy dust everywhere exhale to open up deepen into your twist maybe the hand comes to the floor behind you maybe your hand rests on your low back and again some of you may be able to find your hip crease one side's going to feel different to the other and that's okay Lifting through the spine, grounding down through the hips. If you're on a uneven ground to practice your yoga, that's fine. And then turning your head to the left. Yoga, when it was first developed, was not practiced in a pristine oak floored yoga studio with infrared heaters and juice bars <laughs> and relax come back to all fours so we're going to roll over our legs coming to all fours and we're going to take our cat cow into a bit more of an experimental phase so i'm going to come sideways on so you can see so normally in a cat cow we would have our wrists under our shoulders and our knees under our hips so i just want you to move your hands a couple of hands distances forward <laughs> where they normally would be and slower than you normally would going easier and gentler than you normally would we're doing some cat cows here in a slightly longer stretchier position so really gentle, particularly on the lower back here. 
And notice where your weight wants to distribute and maybe you want to dump. Where do you want to go quickly? And once you've got the feeling of that, maybe walk your hands in so they're almost touching your knees. So you're in a very narrow cat cow. I feel like I'm um, in one of those old fashioned circuses balancing on a, a circus ball. Inhaling to lift the chest, lift the tailbone, exhaling to round the spine, lift the mid spine. And then come back to a neutral position. And we're going to walk back up into our down dog and do our little back bend twisty sequence, forward foldy bit. So bring your hands a little bit further forward off your shoulders, tuck your toes, lifting your hips up and back into a down dog. Stretching out here, just checking in how your body's feeling, maybe taking a breath or two. Still or not, it's up to you, this is your practice. And then bending your knees, taking a deep breath in. Long, full exhale. And at the end of your exhale, stepping or lightly jumping forward. Inhale to lift your chest and step your feet back to hip width apart. This time, we bend the left knee, the right leg straightened, left fingertips on the floor, palm of the, <coughs> palm of the left hand on the floor, or the left hand can be on the shin or thigh. And I'm going to bring the right hand onto the low back, checking out that the low back feels level and flat, keeping that hand on the back to maintain that sense of flatness as we start to twist and lift the right elbow up to the side and then maybe lifting the right arm good trying to keep those hips balanced and level extending into your fingers reaching forwards with the crown of the head and backwards with the tailbone lifting the belly to spine but still breathing deeply on your next inhale press into your feet lift your arms, bring your right hand to your low back, left arm lift, lift your kneecaps, lift Mula Bandha, open your heart to the sky, find a sense of space across your chest, and then exhale, fold forwards, let both hands drop down to the floor, give your head a little nod and a shake. So we'll take a vinyasa here to bring everything back into balance. So inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands. Step or jump back to a plank and lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale to down dog. Spreading your fingers, taking a breath. And then rounding forwards, lifting your hips, rolling forwards and coming all the way down onto your belly. So we're down on our belly. And we're going to bring our elbows and forearms to the floor to come into sphinx pose. Still pressing the toenails into the floor, the backs of the feet into the floor. The kneecaps might lift. Lifting the belly button away from the floor, squeezing shoulder blades together. Back of your neck is long. Lovely. Dragging the floor towards you with your arms. Feeling muscles engaging where perhaps you didn't think they would. In what looks like a very chilled out, relaxed pose. And then we're going to see if we can bring in some movement into these shoulders, just one at a time, rolling the shoulder, lifting the elbows off the floor. It might not feel perfect, it might not look perfect, but we're getting some movement into these shoulders. And the neck. And pressing the hands into the floor, have a go. If it feels too strong, come straight back down. Have a go at pressing into your hands and straightening your arms. Lifting belly towards spine, belly button towards spine. Shoulders are still away from ears. Good. Dragging the floor towards you, feeling that 
strength in the low back. Feel the opening across the belly and the chest. And then some of you might walk your hands in under your shoulders, keeping the lift, try not to draw. Some of you might come up into a higher cobra. Some of you might bring yourselves forwards a little bit here. Press the backs of your feet into the floor. Lift your knees and lift up into an upward facing dog. Taking one more breath. And then lowering your knees, lowering your chest. And just having a rest here. So resting your forehead on your hands and letting your hips sway and sashay from side to side. Feeling the massage of the belly against the floor as you breathe, as you roll. And we're going to have a little bit of a play now with our practice. So um, do what feels right for you. Please listen to your knees. When your knees say no, you stop and you chill out wherever you, you need to stop or come back to rest or come back to a sphinx posture. Your knees are saying okay we can carry on then please do carry on and have a go as i said this is a bit of play time and we're just gonna see what happens so we are going to lift up into a baby cobra so elbows squeezing by the ribs shoulders away from ears feet press into the floor it might help actually if i come this way and then you can see then we are going to bend our knees flex the feet and see if you can lift the knees off the floor. It might just be a millimetre. Lift the chest and see if you can tap the outside of your ankles. Straighten your legs, reach your arms forward, ears between the upper arms. Press your legs down, rest your forehead on your hands. Inhale, baby cobra. Bend your knees. Lift your knees off the floor. See if you can tap the outside of your ankles. Reach your arms forward, straighten your legs, look down at the floor. Rest your forehead on your hands. One more like that. Baby Cobra. Bend your knees, lift your knees. This time, if it's appropriate, can you hold on to your ankles or feet or shins? Pull your feet away from you to lift your chest. And we're going to have a go at rolling onto our right hand side. <laughs> Lovely. So we were here at the beginning of the class just in a different way. Then we're gonna roll back onto our belly, still holding onto our feet. Try not to let our feet go too wide. And then we're gonna roll onto the left hand side. Keeping the feet relatively together, roll back onto your tummy. Keep lifting the knees off the floor if you can. This time, have a go if you want to, rolling onto your right hand side, rolling your feet underneath you and lifting your hips into a bridge. And then rolling back onto your belly. Rolling onto your left hand side, oh, uphill, feet to the floor, lift up into a bridge. And then coming back onto your belly. Lifting one more time. And release. Release your feet, make a pillow with your hands. Take your feet as wide as a yoga mat would be, or a bit wider than your hips. Turn your heels in and your toes out. Let your head rest on your hands. And again, just let your hips rock from side to side. Find your breath, feel your heartbeat, notice your heartbeat in your solar plexus. Hopefully you were breathing when you were doing that. But it should have got your heart rate going a little bit moving energy around our body in a different way. And slide your legs back to hip width apart. Slide your hands under your shoulders. Tuck your toes under and press up to all fours. So we're going to come to all fours now. And to counterpose, we're going to do a side bend. So walk, keep your hips pointing forward. Keep the right hip particularly now drawing backwards and walk your hands over to your left hand side. The right hip's going to want to follow and you're going to want to twist at your hips but we're not doing that. We're bending the spine any amount. It might just be here 
Some of you might come all the way around or even further, but pull the right hip back. So you feel a lovely stretch down the right hand side. Go lifting the belly, so reaching the crown of the head forward. So your neck is long. You're breathing. And then coming back through the center, exploring, noticing sensations as you move your hands. Don't just idly move them around without noticing what is there for you to feel. And then we pull the left hip back and we twist to the right. Drawing shoulders away from ears. Tucking the tailbone under so not arching the back as we bend. And then coming back to centre. And making any little movements that you need to before tucking your toes under behind you and we're going to roll over our feet and come into garland pose or malasana so for me i'm going to have my feet a little bit wider so my heels can drop down my knees are pointing in the same direction as my toes and for today this is something i've been working with myself recently it's really lovely a myofascial release um, tension reducing exercise um, so we're going to use our thumbs and we're going to make gentle fists with the rest of our fingers. Your tailbone is heavy and we're going to rest the point between our eyebrows on the tips of our thumbs and just let your head drop there. Close your eyes and breathe. If you want to sway from side to side, you can. If it's too much on your knees or your ankles or your hips, you can do this posture sitting on the floor or a block with your feet flat to the floor and letting your head drop forward you're still doing the pose you're still lengthening your spine but whichever variation you're in think about your tailbone dropping down to or even into the floor if you want to walk your thumbs around a little bit on that point you can just breathing steady and calm it might feel intense, particularly at the moment when a lot of us, many of us are so stressed and worried and anxious about things that are beyond our control. If it feels quite, ten, uh, quite tender, it might be quite telling of how your emotional state is at the moment. should start to ebb away you might want to walk your hands out think thumbs sorry out along your brow bone just gentle and then release lifting your head slowly making your way to seated in any comfortable cross leg position and well, we're going to transition straight from a pranayama exercise which we're going to do now into an optional shavasana so some of you may choose to stay seated upright when we finish our breathing exercise and stay in a seated meditation some of you might choose to lie down and relax and let go in shavasana so perhaps have make yourselves warm and comfy now grab socks have a blanket nearby if you need it um, because your body temperature may drop a little bit as you practice this um, calming breathing technique that we're going to do now it's called Nadi Shadana and it's an amazing breath technique it helps to balance the left and the right hemisphere of our brain it helps to balance our hormones um, to regulate our moods it balances the sun and the moon elements in our in our own being. Um, so the fire and the water, the, the hot and the cold, however you want to look at it, it's a balanced breath. It brings everything into focus, into a sense of presence and a sense of calm. And it's one that you can practice in the morning to gain a sense of focus for your day. It's also one to practice at night when you just want to calm before bed or any other time in the day. It's just a lovely breathing practice to do. 
sometimes people like to count the breaths, but for today, I would like you to not think about length of breath at all and just breathe deep. So if you've never done this practice before, I will talk you through it. If you know it, then you can join in straight away. We're going to take Vishnu Mudra. There are two different ways, or several different ways of doing this. The way I like to do, because we've had that light pressure on the point between our eyebrows today already, I'm going to use my index finger and middle finger and lightly rest those two fingers at that point between my eyebrows. Then my thumb will be able to block my right nostril and my ring finger with my right hand will be able to block my left nostril. My left hand rests lightly on my left knee. I take a deep breath in through both nostrils and then lightly close both nostrils. Open up the thumb on the right hand side and just take a long steady breath out just through the right nostril as long as you need to. When you fully exhale, take a long steady breath in just through the right side. Keep the left index finger, the index finger on the left. At the end of the inhale, close the right nostril as well. Hold for a second or two. Release the index, the ring finger from the left nostril and breathe out steady. At the end of the exhale, breathe in through the left. At the end of the inhale, hold the breath in, close off both nostrils, and then release the thumb of the right nostril and breathe out. Steady, long, comfortably. At the end of the exhale, breathe in through the right. At the end of the inhale, close off both nostrils and pause. And then open the left nostril and breathe out steady and calm. Now keep this breathing practice going. We'll do a few more rounds on your own. So it's a breathe out, breathe in, close off and change sides. through the left that's going to be our last one so make the long exhale release your right hand to your right knee and this is where you are either welcome to sit and meditate and enjoy the peace and watch your own breath or should you wish to now, you can lie down in Shavasana. And I'm going to leave you there this evening. Resting in whichever variation you have chosen. So that when you feel ready, you can reawaken and begin your day. Thank you for practicing with me. Stay as long as you wish. Namaste.